Thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. I'll see you guys in the next one. There are two things we can say for sure about Jake Tran. Number one, he is bound to be on some kind of watch list by now. And number two, he is absolutely crushing it with YouTube. But what a lot of people might not realize is that before his channel started taking off like it is today, Jake had been posting videos for well over a year that weren't getting much traction. Most of those old videos have since been deleted, but comparing what he was doing when he first started to what he's doing now can tell us a lot about how to be successful on YouTube. Today, we'll be exploring the four key reasons Jake Tran is beating the YouTube algorithm and how you can potentially do the same. There are three crucial things that will heavily determine the success of a video. The title, the thumbnail, and the topic. Jake Tran is a master of all three. Because the biggest sin you can make with these three elements is being too boring especially in the business niche that Jake is in, which is filled with very generic vanilla content. So many people are regurgitating the same information in the same formats. Jake, on the other hand, picks topics that are incredibly unique and fascinating. Often they're controversial things most other people just don't talk about, like China's profitable business of enslaving Africa, or the economics of the Russian mafia. However, you don't even have to go as extreme as Jake does. Let's take this video for instance. How the rich and powerful hide their money. Immediately, I'm intrigued by the topic, title and thumbnail, which makes me want to click to find out more. But let's be clear, it's a video about taxes. It's not exactly the most riveting subject, it's the way Jake has packaged and positioned it that makes us want to click. The reason these three T's are so crucial is because one of the biggest factors that determines whether a video goes viral is click-through rates, which means the percentage of people who click on the video when YouTube displays it. Now, there's no exact magic number to aim for, but if you can get over 10% click-through rate, you have an extremely good chance of going viral if the video is good quality as well. The average click-through rate, though, is more like 3%. Just stop and think about that for a second. That means 33 times more people will see your thumbnail and title than will see your actual video. And yet, most people treat the thumbnail and title as an afterthought and barely put any time or effort into it. I assure you, you will start getting much better results by spending significantly more time on these elements. In fact, a lot of top YouTubers like Jake create multiple different thumbnails and titles and split test which one gets more clicks. Because they know this can make or break a video, no matter how good the actual content is. A great trick that Jake uses is incorporating recognizable, famous faces that attract more attention. Just like I'm doing right now with Jake Tran. However, where Jake really excels when it comes to the three T's is that he designs them for viewers, not search engines. Let me explain. A lot of YouTube advice tells you to essentially stuff keywords into the title to try and rank in search. So for example, Jake could have called this video something very literal, like how offshore banks work, which probably gets more search impressions. But contrary to popular belief, ranking in search is not the main goal if you want lots of views. I have spoken with a wide range of large YouTube creators, from Charisma on Command to James Janney to countless others, and all of them have said the vast majority of their traffic comes from suggested videos, not search. That's how you can go really viral very quickly, when YouTube is pushing your content in the suggested bar or homepage. I bet that's probably how you found Jake Tran's content in the first place. YouTube suggested it to you. And the first step to getting in suggested videos is a higher click-through rate. Which means you need a title and thumbnail that is intriguing and interesting for real people, not just search engines. So, to sum up the three T's, just remember the golden rule. Don't be boring. Before you post your own videos, 
ask yourself if you would honestly click on it yourself if YouTube showed you that title, thumbnail and topic. If not, maybe some tweaks are needed. Because even a video about taxes can be made exciting if you present it in the right way. When Jake began on YouTube, most of his videos were him talking to the camera and him trying to emulate his favorite creators. I got super inspired by him. I wanted to be like Graham. So I started making videos pretty much exactly like him. Like I've told him before, I started out copying him. But his growth spike begun when he switched to his own unique style, using movie and TV clips to help illustrate what he was saying. Because unless you're somebody who's really well known already, the brutal reality is that people aren't that interested in what you have to say. There's so many thousands of other people saying similar things to a camera as well. So you need to find a way to stand out and grab the audience's attention. Using cinematic clips is definitely one way of doing that because it immediately gives the video a much more professional and interesting feel. Especially when you mix that with Jake's distinctive dry sarcasm. It gives the videos a vibe that feels unique to him. When you're watching it, you know it's a Jake Tran video because it has a clear identity that you won't really get elsewhere. And so it stands out so much more, which leads you back to his channel over and over again. Now, maybe you yourself would like to incorporate movie clips like Jake does, and you're wondering, what about copyrights? And the quick answer to that is there's something called fair use, which means you can legally use copyrighted material if you do it in a certain way. One of the key parts of this is that you transform the original work into something new. If you just post a movie clip on its own, that's not fair use. But Jake turns that movie clip into something completely different because he uses that clip to help illustrate what he's explaining in the video. Not just that, but he uses a very, very small amount of the movie, typically just a couple of seconds, and adds his own voiceover. So with all of these things combined, plus a few other fair use factors you can look up, he's able to incorporate this movie footage into his videos and still monetize them. Now, I see some people trying to do a similar thing with free stock footage sites, like Pexels and Pixabay. At least, that's what I did at first. And free stock footage is fine sometimes, but the clips from these free sites are so overused that the clips become kinda repetitive and boring. I'm willing to bet you've seen clips like this in videos before, right? Which is why I think Jake's choice to use clips from famous movies and TV shows works so well. It gives him a much wider choice of scenes and he can use recognizable actors and really well filmed shots to help bring the videos to life. Now, maybe using clips isn't right for the type of videos you want to make, but the real message to take from this point is to consider how you're presenting your videos. Just talking to a camera puts you in the same category as the vast majority of people posting content. What's gonna be your way of keeping people entertained? The reason this is so crucial is because the other most important metric the YouTube algorithm really cares about, aside from click-through rates, is average view duration. Which means, on average, how much of your video are people actually watching? The higher the average view duration, the better chance of the video being suggested to more people. And so the simple reason Jake Tran is doing so well with the algorithm is because his click-through rate and average view duration are outperforming other videos. I realize that sounds too simple, but I assure you, this is the real key to getting the YouTube algorithm to promote your videos. Get a high click-through rate, a high average view duration, and you can go viral like Jake Tran does. The problem, of course, is just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. So now let's look at one of the key ways Jake Tran manages to keep audience retention rates so high that you should definitely be using too. Question, why are so many billions of dollars spent on movies every year? It's because we love stories. And every Jake Tran video feels like a story, a mini movie taking you from start to finish. In fact, in Jake's narrative, he'll often put you as the protagonist of the story. 
Just listen to this example. If you were an entrepreneur that managed to make it big and built yourself a nice, giant, successful business, you were on top of the world. But you're ambitious. You want more, more money, more profits. You want to crush and suffocate. He keeps saying you because he's literally taking you through the story. And so I challenge you to think about how your content can sometimes be wrapped into more of a story as well. Just look at this video you're watching right now. The information itself is pretty dry, talking about algorithms and average view durations, but it's wrapped within the story of how Jake Tran built such a successful YouTube channel, going from struggling creator to full-time YouTuber. And just to be clear, stories don't have to be something elaborate. Let me give you an example. There's an urban legend that Ernest Hemingway once had a bet with some fellow writers, where he was challenged with writing a story that could make someone cry in just six words. Here's what he wrote. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. He won the bet. So the point here is that incorporating anecdotes and stories in your videos, whether from yourself or something you've heard, is a really powerful tool because they add an emotional, memorable element rather than just telling someone information. Jake Tran regularly uses stories to help break complex information into entertaining content. And this is a perfect way for you to draw people into your video, thus keeping viewers watching longer and boosting that audience retention rates. But now onto our fourth and final point of why Jake Tran is beating the YouTube algorithm. One thing that's not talked about enough in my opinion is that most large YouTubers are not doing it all themselves. If you're sat there feeling disheartened that Jake Tran could make a well-researched and edited video every single week, bear in mind that he's hired people now to help him, as most channels do as they grow, including this channel you're watching right now. Building a small team to help you is undoubtedly the fastest way to scale the channel while still keeping the quality high. And Jake cleverly tapped into his existing audience to help find the right team members. On the community tab, he posted about a new job position, which meant he got applicants who he knew would already like and understand what his channel was all about. So when you get to a position where you can afford some help, I think it's well worth reinvesting money into your channel. For some reason, this seems a little taboo for some YouTubers to talk about this, but it's undeniably going to accelerate your growth if you have someone to help you with thumbnails and editing and so on. So hopefully these four principles from Jake Tran have given you some inspiration for your own content. But if you're still watching at this point, my guess is you're serious about growing your channel as fast as possible and eventually turning it into a business and hiring a team, just like we mentioned with Jake. So if that's the case, check out the top link in the description because our YouTube Business Blueprint program goes in depth about how you can do all of that. It also goes much deeper into ways of boosting click-through rate, audience retention, and much, much more. So check that out below and you can get started right away. But now I have a question for you. Can we trust Amazon? Don't get me wrong, from a customer perspective, using Amazon is great. But there's just one problem. They're kind of taking over the world. And whilst that sounds overdramatic, when you hear that they're running physical grocery stores, making Oscar-winning movies, and even opening a futuristic hair salon, well, you'll see what I mean. So if you want to know more, Check out the documentary I made on Jeff Bezos and Amazon that was actually inspired by Jake Tran's video style. Or if you want some more videos about growing on YouTube, I've got you covered as well. Check this out right here. Thank you for watching to the end. You are a legend and I'll see you next time. Cheers.